Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today is Friday. No idea what the date is. I know it's January 2010. Wishing you all a great new year. I'm feeling really good today. Feeling really good today. I guess I feel really good every day, but today I'm feeling exceptionally good. So, first thing I want to say is stay tuned. We're really excited. Me and Jeannie, my wife, my business partner, um, my friend, whatever you want to call her. We started our Blog Talk Radio page. It's www.blogtalkradio.com backslash East West Healing. Go there. Subscribe for the RSS feed. Our show is every Thursday at 2 p.m. It's called Holistic Living from Wellness to Weight Loss to Pain Elimination in Relaxation. Those are all the topics we're going to discover. We're not going to interview people. It's me and Jeannie going back and forth talking about specific topics. We did our first one yesterday. It was called Holistic Living, the Original American Diet. And just some basic techniques, things that you can think about in regards to um, your health, diet to kickstart the new year, and how it's not about food anymore. Our foods and our life are just riddled with toxins, so we're showing you how these toxins can lead to weight gain. So we give you some simple steps in order to start off the new year and start leading a life of vitality. The next one we're doing is next Thursday. Um, at 2 o'clock. And, and if you can't make it, don't worry. They're actually recorded on our Blog Talk Radio site. I'll put the link down there, actually. Um, and you can sign up for the RSS feed, as well as you can get us on iTunes now. We have we're, They upload to iTunes directly, so you can download it to your MP3 player. Pass the word around. Tell everyone about it. Our next week, our topic is called The Many Faces of Back Pain. So we're going to be talking about the physical side of back pain, how there's so many different types of back pain, and how each one needs to be treated differently, and how too many people are treating these issues the same. And just giving you some red flags so you can identify possibly what type of pain you have. Maybe some things that you could do, as well as showing you the nutritional side of back pain. And we're going to have just tons of different topics, from well, weight loss to wellness to pain elimination and relaxation. So stay tuned every Thursday, 2 p.m., the recorded if you can't make it, www.blogtalkradio.com backslash east west healing that's it as well check out our website at eastwesthealing.com we got tons of free audios articles on and on and on okay enough i'm, I'm gonna start talking while well, i've been talking i'm gonna start talking this is the third i actually i'm losing track here hold on a second i think it's the fourth series of the emotional and physical side of candida we talked about the physical side you know this is youtube we're just talking about it in a a basic sense not diagnosing. I'm not giving you all the key points just because we only got 10 minutes and I could talk for 10 hours on this. And of course, I get emails that say, well, you forgot this, you forgot that, you forgot that candida inhibits thymine, you forgot that candida in inhibits your immune system, you forgot that candida gives off chitin, which absorbs mercury. Well, there's so much about it. I'm just giving you the basics to get you started. We've got to get back to the basics. So, the emotional side. How do we get it from the emotional side of it? We have to look at candida and why we have it. Not everyone has a candida overgrowth for the same reason. It could be because you have a mercury toxicity. It could be because you're overeating and sugar. But it could be emotionally driven. A lot of people develop candida overgrowths, like I said, from food, sex with partners that have it, prescription medications, and stressors, right? Physical stress. Uh, chemical stress, electromagnetic stress, financial stress, which is huge right now, as well as emotional and spiritual stress, right? Spiritual meaning religious stress, because our religions basically say, you know, don't do this, don't do that, or you have to basically repent for your sins because you're a sinner and you get judged. So there's a lot of financial, emotional, mental, and spiritual stress out there. Well, stress has many phases, as you know, and you have to figure out what stressors are affecting you? Because if you stub your toe, you eat sugar, you get in a fight, someone tells you to, you know, whatever, and you don't like it, your body reacts to it in the same way. It doesn't go, well, this is a food stress, this is an emotional stress, and it differentiates it. It affects your physiology in the same way. And beside the point, a lot of the physiology that's actually affected from the stress response is fat storing, right? So, as Eastern philosophers say, the more you know, parasympathetic. The more that you can de-stress your body, in a sense, the more calm you're going to be with yourself, inner stillness, and the less weight you're going to be. So how do we get it on the emotional side? Well, and a lot of this isn't research. It's from what I've seen, from what I've read. It's not being able to express your emotions, internalizing them. I mean, how many people do you know that don't express themselves? 
because of a partner they're with, or because their religion says not to, or because of their family, you know, because they have a, a strong ethnic background, or internalizing their emotions, really not being themselves and, and letting themselves out. You know, I was married before, and I really, you know, I, I can blame it on her at the same token and not take, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ownership for it, but I wasn't really allowed to be myself, so I kind of trained myself to not really be myself. I tried to be who I thought she wanted to be. Well, you know, it doesn't work because the more you internalize them, I always suffer from a candy and infection, always. Now, I don't know if it's from that or from foods or from traveling, but if we internalize our emotions and we let things build, and we put energy towards that, well, things can actually start to overgrow. As well as programming from your tribe, programming from your family, programming from your religion, and not really learning from life events, right? Not really learning from is, you know, every day in life, uh, life is always teaching us lessons, always. And it's tough. Trust me, I go through it every day. You could hit a little molehill and turn it into a mountain. You can either focus on the positive, or we could say there's two sides to the coin. You can focus on the side that's going to allow you to say, well, poor me and play the victim, which most people do. Or you can focus on the other side. There's no positive and negative. There's no right or wrong, right? It's what works for you. Or you can focus on the other side, which is a side that allows you to understand the event. Empathy, compassion, learn from it, be able to move on and grow from it. As well as allow yourself to not become stagnant. So think about those two sides next, next, thing, uh, next time something happens. At the same time, it's from basically, obviously, living an unhealthy life, stinking thinking, or perceived fears. A lot of us are instilled fears early on in life from our tribe, from our family, from our religion. And we're really not allowed to grow. Our, you know, what I call is, you know, as we are young, we're kind of like brought up in a family if, you know, I was brought up Jewish, whatever. That because your parents or your family were this religion, because your fa pa parents or family had this belief system or that belief system on and on, that you have to have that belief system. So I feel anywhere between, you know, three to four years old, most of us emotionally stop growing for ourselves, or really what I say, stop growing for our identity. One second, I just got to check the time here so I don't go over. So what happens is we lose our sense of I, we become so codependent on everything and everyone in our society or around us, and we get our needs met through that because of our fears, because of living for everyone else's belief system. And what happens is we actually subconsciously or consciously start to develop our own beliefs, but we internalize them. We don't express them because we feel like we're going against the tribe. So why do we get it? I'm kind of already touching upon this because we are not expressing ourselves when we're internalizing things. Most people are not living their own script, meaning you're, what you want to do. You go to church, you go to temple, you go to this college, you go to this work because that's what your parents did. That's what your parents want you to do. What do you really want to do? What do you really want to say? What do you really want to express? You know, a lot of people say I'm obnoxious because I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you said that to this person. Well, when you said that, that was kind of mean. I'm being myself. I express everything, everything I experience in life. And if that offends someone, people can say that's obnoxious. But at the same token, I mean, I don't go there and say, well, you know, those pants suck. You're a retard. But I express everything I feel. I don't want to internalize everything because it's me. What you get 100% of the time is Josh. You're going to like it or not like it. And what you really don't like is the experience of yourself around me. It's not that you don't like me because you don't know me. So express yourself. We have too many people bottling up emotions. Why else do we get it? By holding things in, according to TCM, it can affect the lung and large intestine. Lung and large intestine. This is that yin, yin, um, yin and yang energy. They're paired. And over, over time, you create the environment for fungus to grow in the respiratory tract or in the large intestine, and on and on. So if these things bottle up, they can actually overgrow. So the bottom line is we're a product of our environment, and we never stop developing who we are. Got to check the time again. Sorry. I'm almost going to go over. Um, we learn to, get, and I said, we learn to get our needs met through other people and things, and we learn coping skills and focusing on the past and future, right? We like to create smoke screens, smoking what was and what could be. We never stay present. So stay tuned. I got to go. My time is almost up. Part four will continue with the emotional side of Candida. I'm out of here. Peace. And I'm out.